This is Michael Wu from eProgrammer.com. I'm going to talk about what is a PID controller and how can we do a PID control in Simulink. In different situations, we want to change different uh, parameters. Sometimes we want to change the KT, sometimes we want to change the KI, sometimes we want to change the KD. Assume you have already know how to build a second order um, equation in Simulink, and this is the equation. We have already built this up a second order uh, Simulink block. Now, we search for the PID block in the Simulink um, library browser. We put that into a Simulink. We replace the F1, which is the false input, with the PID controller. This time, we're going to change that. The input is not false. We want to change the input to be X. We want the desired X input to, to give a certain amount of force into the system and then drive the system. Now, as we know, the input of the uh, PID controller is the error function, which is the desired uh, x value, subtract the measured x value. The desired x value is the step input this time. The measured x value is the output, which is the output connector to the scope. We take that value to there. To, to the uh, subtraction function. And then put the output of the subtraction to the PID controller. In order we can see two curves in one scope, we need to use this MUX connector. The desired input would be one of the, the curve into the scope. The other input to the scope would be the measured um, X value. The measured X value at the same time will go to um, the subtraction, the X error will come out, the X error will get into the PID controller. The output of the PID controller is equal to the force value, the force input value. And that will put back to the second order system which is replace the original F, and that is the new force command. And you can see the equation is MA equal to F minus KX minus BV. At this time, you can see for the default PID value, it does not close to uh, what we want. The desire is a step function. The output is just far away from, from what is the target response. So we change the proportional value to 10. And you can see even it is getting closer, but it is still not able to close to the desired value. So we change the, keep changing the profess, uh, proportional value. OK, what you can see in here, you can see it is still not able to reach it. That is called static error. If you want to improve the static error, you can change the I value in your PID controller instead of changing the P value. OK, so you can see this time, it is getting better.
Now we change the proportional value again. To see whether there are some further improvement. We also change the integrate integrate value. Integral value. Now okay, so you can see right now the curve can reach uh tens the step ten at six seconds. Now I'm going to talk about how to do the auto PID. Click on the PID controller. You see the tune button. Click on it. It will take a long time. I just make it fast, make it happen instantly in the video. It will pop up this screen. And you can see you can change the respawn time. You can change it whether you want it to be happen faster, slower, or what? Once again, if you do it by yourself, it will take a long time before it pop up this PID tuner, graphical user interface. It took me like more than five minutes. Click OK. Double click again. You can see the proportional value, integrated value, and the derivative value have been set, and the filter coefficient have been set. Now. If you want this again, I use a signal generator as an uh, input function. So it tries to follow the whole signal generator input. You can see it follow it quite well, uh, have a very fast response, and you only need to kick a button to make it done.